Welcome back. So now we can slowly make our way into the charts back again. And we will do another few lessons around chart concepts, and then we will get into our actual chart patterns. How to get into trades and how to time our trades. So, first of all, we need to talk about support and resistance. However, don't worry. I will not bother you with the general support and resistance stuff that you have probably read hundreds of times. This is going to be very different and very helpful. So the purpose of support and resistance generally. Support resistance are natural price structures on our charts. They're usually horizontal levels and lines. We need them to find our stops and targets as we will see later. And we will use them for trade timing and to define our trading patterns. If this sounds abstract, once we get into the charts in a moment, this will become clear. So now, a few support and resistance concepts. First of all, support resistance, our natural turning point. The strength of the turn away from the level is very important. You will hear me say dozens of times during this course, how does the price trade into the level? How does the price trade into a level? And if this doesn't make sense, it will shortly after this course, you have probably heard me say this many times. Absorption is very important and it means level strength. So how many times has the market come back to a level? What does this say out about the level? Is it becoming strong or weak and what do we need to be aware of? And we will learn to deal with imperfection because as I've said, our price charts, the live price chart that we will use to make trading decisions are not textbook setups that you would see in books and on most websites. So we really need to be aware of imperfection and how to deal with them. So let's start with the basics. This is a resistance level. Obviously don't worry. We'll get into more advanced stuff in a moment, but as is generally a resistance level. It's a previous high and it has been used again. This is a support level? Mostly. So here it is resistance. Obviously because the price came from underneath. Then here it is support here. We came shy of it and then it became resistance once again. Very, very basic. How long do we keep track of levels? I always say that if a level hasn't been used for a long time, it loses its relevance. So here, obviously this was a very important level here and here. But you can see this is the two-hour chart and the market spend four weeks, four and a half weeks away from this level. So this is not going to be as important anymore. And you will see this very, very often that if a market hasn't been at a level, it is not important anymore. Not as important I should say. And there's this odd absorption. Here the market starts paying attention to this before it was resistance. Now it's becoming support and support and support. All absorption. Look, the market has touched it once, two times, three times with each touch the price came back to the level quicker. Quicker. And very, very quickly. Also here the market didn't pull away from the level as much as it did here and here. So this tells us that the level is becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. Not as many buyers waiting at this level anymore. So general support and in resistance theory will tell you that there are the more often the market has touched a level, the stronger it is becoming. I completely disagree with that. And it's again, one of those myths. The more often a level has been touched, the more obvious it is. If a level has been touched two, three, four times, everybody will know about this level. Everyone will has it on their charts and then if everyone is watching it, it will become so hard, if not impossible to make money. If everyone is on the same side of a trade, usually that's not going to work out. And the absorption is playing into this concept a little bit. So each time the level is weakening and weakening. And then it is just too obvious. Nobody wants to buy anymore. And then the market falls through it. We will see this many. Many. How does price trade into a lever? So you've heard me say this twice. You will hear me say it many. Many times. Again, the market has a resistance level here. It comes back. Sells off a lot. It comes back. Sells off less. It comes back. Sells off way, way less. So here we can see the market is making higher lows. It is coming back to the levels sooner and sooner. It has been touched many times. Everybody will be aware of this level now. And then it doesn't work anymore. 
It's not going to work as resistance anymore. Everybody is aware of it. Here it was the first touch. Here has the second touch. Not so many people will be training this one. And that is what we are going to refer to as the freshness of a level. This is a fresh level. It has been used once, twice. This has been used once. Twice, three times, three and a half, four times. And how does price trade into a level? Very important. Imperfection of levels. So we are never blindly going to trade into a level just because there is a support level here. We're not going to use it in the future. We are always going to wait for confirmation. Confirmation are our setups that we are going to learn soon. Our patterns that we are going to learn how to enter price and how to enter trades, I should say. So just because the market has a level here and is having a level or just because it has a level bit here, it doesn't automatically mean that's where we're going to trade the next time the price comes back because the market will often overshoot a level like it did here. And then it turns around. So we really need to wait and until the price is coming back here to a level. But let's wait for a pattern. And if we don't have a pattern, we don't enter. Also, I said it in the beginning, we're not going to catch a falling knife just because the market is coming down and down and down into the level. It doesn't mean automatically we are going to buy here. We are waiting for a pattern. Here as well, we have a previous touch point. A previous low. The market comes back to it. it doesn't respect it. And then it starts rally later. So that's very common. Especially when those areas, first of all, when they stand out and when they are, haven't been tested in a long, long time. So those are the things that come together here. Here as well. The market has a low the market. Doesn't respect it at all. It comes back and use it now as resistance. Very important. Very interesting. We have a swing low here. The market comes back into it. It overshoots it a little bit and it's come back. So, support and resistance are not going to be perfect. And that is okay. However, you need to understand that you're not going to expect perfect levels. You're not going to expect perfect patents as we will see later. And this will help you in your trading a lot because most traders are waiting for the perfect conditions. And they're always waiting for everything to look like in their textbooks. And most courses that were just show your textbook. After textbook, after textbook trade, the trades to setups. To chart studies here, they will be all over the place. They will always look differently. They will have the same characteristics. But there will always be a little bit different so that you are prepared for everything that could happen on your trade. Here again, imperfection of support and resistance. We have a low. The price of a shoots it, but we have something here. There are different patterns that we could trade. You can see that the market comes a little bit short on this level here. We overshoot it here. Then we overshoot it here once again. Here we overshoot this point and we overshoot it even more. When you look at a past price chart, it is very easy to just look at it and say, it just would have worked. It would have worked. I just, I wait a little bit longer. Just would have worked. This would have worked. No. This is not how it works. When we are making decisions on the hard right corner when there's nothing here. When we don't know what is going to happen next. We need to understand that we are dealing with imperfect price movements. The market is volatile. The market is very dynamic in millions and millions of traders. Institutions, large banks acting on the market. So you really need to be aware of. And we need to be ready for those imperfections and for this volatility. And then we can make much, much better trading decisions. One last final example. How does price trade into a level? You will hear this many more times, so you can see price comes back into the lever we sell off. Then we come back here. Sell off. We come back here. Sell off. And then how do we come into the level? We make, again, higher, high, high low. High low, high low. And then the breakout happens. At this point, the market has been touched once, twice, three times, four times. Here came as a little bit short, five times. And then it immediately comes back into the level. The price immediately comes back to the level. It did here as well. 
But here at this point, we didn't have the confirmation of how does price and trade into the level. Here it did so with higher lows. So this is very, very important. If a market is already gravitating towards those levels and if it has been touched so many times, it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. And this is something we will explore in many different patents and you will be able to use this going forward very effectively.